Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about some of the videos that are paid requests? It's time for Lutus. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1990 film Mighty Joe Young. Which I remember not minding the film. I still don't mind the movie. I liked it. It's directed by Ron Underwood, who did films like City Slickers and the first Tremors movie. And you have Bill Paxton which may not be my favorite role of his. I would say I prefer his roles in Aliens, Twister, Frailty, True Lies, among others, but Predator 2. But I like the Pax. I miss Bill Paxton. I think he passed away way, way too soon. Still infuriating how he passed as well. Because the doctors not know what they were doing. But I really do miss the guy. You also have Charlize Theron. This is before she did Bad Mass Fury Road and A Time of Blonde. And some people didn't really care for her role here. I didn't mind it. I thought it worked fine for what it needed to be. Uh, I have seen the original Mighty Joe Young. I don't remember it too well, but I, I do remember liking it. I do remember enjoying the stop motion animation, among other stuff. And so this came out in 1998, and I don't know if it really did the best box office wise. And it's a remake that's kind of forgotten. But it's one of those films that I do like. Not just because I like those two actors, but Joe himself. I thought was a wonderful creation by Rick Baker. Now, understandably, people remember Rick Baker more for stuff like in American Wolf in London, among other stuff. But I definitely this is this is one of his more underrated creations. I think they really, he really makes it feel alive, Joe. The facial expressions, the eyes especially. You see how it, it tears and emotes and just breathes life to it. And again, it's very, very hard to do that CGI, but this is what you do and capture practically. And so there's a lot of scenes where you have this big, huge gorilla in the middle of a city sitting on cars, doing things, throwing cages, that looks like a real big gorilla doing it. And the amount of practical effects they use in this is impressive. Very impressive. And that's why the effects in this, for the most part, stand fairly well compared to other films of that time period that might have tried to use more CG, among other stuff. Now, the setup of the film is that Chelly's Theron, when she was a kid, her mom studied and took pictures of gorillas. She was with her mom. She was friends with this other baby gorilla called Joe. One that leads to another. Poachers come. And they kill Joe's mom. They kill Chelly's Theron's, her character's mom. Her mom tries to calm her, her kid with this son that they hum together and I thought I like the song I like the music I like the the tone the inflections and James Horner out there did a nice job incorporating that into the actual score at times thought it was a, it was a left a bit of sweetness to the proceedings and that's the other guy who Sally's passed away James Horner who did this movie aliens among other films may he rest in peace so many years go by, they're much more grown, and Bill Paxton has arrived. He's with this wildlife refuge, he's heard stories about this creature, but also wants to get blood from, for, from other animals. They capture one, and then they hear this roaring, and Joe comes out and rips the cover of the cage to free the animal, throws the cage at one of their trucks. And then this chase happens where they're trying to dart it, or they're trying to capture it, and Joe is taking the chains, using it as a clothesline, and some have to duck while Bill Patch's character has to jump <laughs> so he doesn't get cut in half. Very effective action scene where a lot of it's done in camera, a lot of it's done practically. Again, if you did this film today, it'd be like in Godzilla X Con where everything is CGI, or every other thing is CG computer screened. And when, I don't think it would be as effective. I didn't, the amount of work they put into having Joe be a practical effect 
to me is very impressive very impressive I know it's nominated for an Oscar for effects I think what dreams may come one which that is a good choice just that's another film with some impressive effects but Rick Baker and his team did a bang up job with this man easily the best part is Joe again his emotions the way he emotes his eyes there's a character there you really see it buy into it being alive being real it feels alive it looks alive so Paxton he doesn't want to let bygones be bygones he still cares to see what's going on what's happening there's a couple little run-ins with Joe and Charlie's Theron who tells him you need to leave but one thing leads to another they realize that the areas don't have more and more poachers there Joe is an hundred percent safe here Bill says hey what about LA I have, we have a wildlife refuge there's no poaching there you could be safe there Charlie's doesn't really want to do it but she doesn't have much choice that doesn't show how they get from there to LA you think that would be a bit of a hurdle like what did they just get to a random boat and did they take a boat did they put Joe on a plane that's what I'm wondering, like, how do you go from here to L.A.? That felt like it'd be a hell of an adventure as well. But no, it's like, cuts from them, boom, they're in L.A. in a truck. I'm like, well, again, how did that all work out? I don't know, they don't show it. <laughs> but he gets into the wildlife refuge. There's some recognizable people who are co-workers for Bill Paxton's character. David Pamer, who's in City Slickers, and... He's been in quite a few other films. You also have Regina Teen, who was in the first Friday movie. I would say this section, Sally, watch it again, was a bit slow, a bit of a slog to sit through. Because there's not a whole lot happening other than, you know, some cute moments with Joe. Where David Paymer stared, and then Charlie's is telling him, no, he's playing hide and seek come out and say you found me he does it and then Joe hoo, 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 runs off and is trying to hide and you see again that it's they say that you really buy into them capturing this person the, this gorilla as a character now I'm guessing they had of course had someone in a suit were very well articulated but the way they made it where it looked bigger than other people and but they put them in the same frame I think they executed, they executed that fairly well for a film in 1998. But there's not a whole lot happening. It's kind of like he's sitting there and he's trying to deal with being the refuge. Charlize Theron and Bill Paxton don't really have much character-wise to work with. I guess I should be thankful they don't try to do a love story aspect. But okay, then how about a friendship aspect? You see them connecting as friends, or you maybe get to learn a bit more of Bill Paxton and his character, or a bit more of Bill trying to relate to Joe, and Bill trying to... Like, there's a nice scene where Joe's very sad, and Bill puts his hand out in the Joe's hand, and Joe looks, and then closes his hand over Bill's. That was a nice, sweet scene. But I would like to have seen a bit more of that. Or a bit more of the refuge trying to connect with Joe. Maybe all of them try to play games with Joe. Try to get him used to it. Calm down. It just didn't feel like there was a whole lot happening though. In the middle section of that movie. And then the bad... Like I said, I wish there was more terrorization on Chili's and Bill Paxton. I wish a bit more was going on in the middle of the movie. The bad guys, they're pretty much kind of one note. Evil bad guy. In the past, Joe bit his finger off. He sees that... Oh, wait. Charlie Strong's character is what now? Oh, yeah. You're the guy that shot her mom, and then you shot Joe's mom. and So that must be the gorilla. So he wants revenge on it. Now, granted, you say part of his money steam, but he also wants revenge as well. So 
So he goes off. And like I said, I mean, it's, it's whatever. I know I've seen that bad guy before. I forget his name. I'm trying to think. It's one of those things where it's just kind of run in the middle of a bad guy. Like he's not a bad actor, but nothing about him is really going to make me remember him or be noteworthy. Not in terms of dialogue, not in terms of speeches, not in terms of grandeur, not in terms of charm. Just so he just kind of feel run in the mill because of that. He tries to get Joe in trouble by showing this type of thing, this dangling, I forget what it's called. It's like a bunch of chains dangled together that reminds Joe of what happened to his mom and ruins his gala, this gala. So they want to get rid of Joe. Charlie's is scared. And then our bad guy comes in and goes, well, I got an offer for you. I actually have a better place than this. Tricks her. They realize too late. And that's where you get pretty much the... The worthwhile part of the movie is the third act of the film. Where... Joe sees that Charlie's Throne's in trouble, gets out of the truck, and it's kind of roaming the city a bit. Whether it be this car he's making noise, so he keeps hitting and jumping on the car for it to quiet down. There's a bunch of women here in this car. He moves it. And like, wow, that was so cool. Those bits are entertaining to watch. I mean, you don't have a lot of action. Like, it's not Team Kong where you don't have Joe fighting a lot of things. And maybe that's an issue is that you kind of wish he would have fought like other creatures in the jungle to make him seem more mighty. I mean, he's only mighty because of how big he is, but it felt like in the original, there were more feats of strength or, or stuff he was able to do to showcase him being the mighty Joe Young. Here in the, the city, it's pretty much just him just trying to escape, escape in the truck. I do like the bet that he crawls over this car and they have this guy, and he looks at the crying guy, he's like, pussy. <laughs> he doesn't say that, but you get the idea, <laughs> pussy. And he did some wrong crit. Like at one point he's on the man's Chinese theater. Then at one point he's at the Hollywood sign. I'm like, how the hell did he get from there to there and there? Is he teleporting? Maybe it was like Jason and when he took Manhattan. And it, it works up to this amusement park where the bad guy, sh the bad guy shoots at it, causes a fire. Now, there's a bit where Joe picks up the poacher guy, and Charlize is watching, and they throw the poacher, and he gets electrocuted to death. Now, the cops see this. The cop witnesses this. Now, take that in mind. But things are on fire, and Joe, I again, huge credit, and this is why I do like the film, is Rip Baker, his crew, what they did with Joe. You see his eyes go up and his mouth drop and just being like, oh no, because there's a kid at the Ferris wheel who's trapped and sort of the horror in Joe's face and eyes. I'm like, yeah, they made this character feel alive. And he goes up and saves the kid. And again, great usage of practical effects. But I think this is a film that's underrated for how much that was utilized in this. Been unsung for the technical achievements this film achieved. So in that case, I would say underrated. Narrative-wise, character-wise, there's a lot more that could have been done. Like I said, Bill and, and Charlie's characters could have been fleshed out a lot more. A lot more, I think, could have been done in the wildlife refuge. I don't think not, en not nearly enough stuff was done in that environment. The bad guy, maybe if he had a character written that had a bit more swag charm, something of that nature that makes it a bit more memorable of a weaselly character. Even if it was like maybe like a James Woods type of guy or something like that. 
Brad Dourif or that type of thing. But yeah, the effects on this saves the kid. And it's spoilers. You think he's dead, but he's thankfully not dead. And then they're wondering, well, what are we going to do? We, we can't find a place to, to keep him safe. I'll do money for Joe, and the kid does. One thing I do like, sometimes it's the little bits that you appreciate when, you know, the, the kid that Joe saved, he looks at it and says, is he going to be okay, mommy? I don't know. And then the mom tells Charlie's, I'm sorry. I know they may not seem nothing to a lot of people, but so many films, they would not even add that. But it gives a little bit more feeling to those side characters. You can't even say characters, like side people. Oh, the kid who got saved, he actually appreciates that this preacher saved him. Oh, the mom actually appreciates. And not only that, she's sorry that what Joe's hurt her at this point, maybe dying or dead. So the mom has sorrow for it. So that makes me go, oh, okay, they were worth it. Of course they're worth it in real life, but just because all these characters are fake, that part of your brain goes, oh, wow, well, those are decent people. Those are decent human beings. So it just gives that little extra to a character that I don't even know they have names. I think the kid does because the mom yelled it, but I don't even know if the mom had a name. But anyway, some of those little things that you appreciate when you see so many films. But people start giving money, including the cop, which I recognize the cop. He was, oh, he's been a lot of stuff. Richard Real. He was one of the characters in Office Space. He was in the film Hatchet. He was the, the older guy that got kind of cut in half he's been a lot of other stuff um, I think he was the guard in the fugitive in the bus who gave a hard time to people and um, I see he's, he's one of those I've seen that guy before type of things but he's a cop and he saw that Joe threw this guy to his death. Now, he doesn't know that this guy killed these two's parents. Also, that wouldn't matter because that's still vigilante justice and it's still... Like, the cop doesn't know any of this. They got there, they saw this creature throwing this person to be electrocuted. That's all he knows, other than Joe saving this kid. It's like he forgot that he saw him kill a guy because he doesn't know that Joe, like, he doesn't know the details of the story. He didn't read the script like we did. <laughs> like, he didn't see the movie like we did. So the cop should be like, I would give you money, but I gotta bring the, you know, you did murder that guy. In his eyes, it'd be you murdered that guy. I don't know who that guy is, but you threw him and electrocuted. So <laughs> it's like they forgot about that. Like, shh, don't, don't mention that. Let him get some uh, amnesia from that. <laughs> it's like, what? So I thought that was pretty funny. But other than that... Uh, it's a cute film. I like the two lead actors. Fantastic effects on Joe. Again, a sluggish middle. Not much happening. Entertaining the finale, though. It's, dec it's pretty... It's a good family fair. It's a worthwhile film to watch. I wouldn't put it as a classic, but it's it's a fun one. Again, I wish the characters of Charlie's and Bill Patson had more flourish to them, were built up more, a little bit more meat to the bones. I wish the Wildlife Refuge, I think they could have utilized a lot more with that environment and the way Joe tries to deal with it compared to in the... Or even to see more of Joe in his heyday in the jungle. Whether he, there's maybe creatures he had to fight off or other things he had to do. You don't really get a whole lot of that, Sally. But overall, I still like it. I thought it was still a pretty decent film. That's just me, though. Again, great work by Rick Baker and his team. So with that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.